Orgasmic Enlightenment, where the sexual and spiritual come together. I'm Kim Anami, and I'm a holistic sex and relationship coach and a vaginal weightlifter. In this show, we explore all things intimate. I believe that our sexual energy is life force, creative energy, and we can use it to shape our worlds, strengthen our relationships, and self-actualize. I blend the most avant-garde information from neuroscience, ancient sexual practices like Tantra and Taoism, to renegade wellness modalities to show you how to create gourmet sex in your lives. Come one, come all. Kim's three favorite healing modalities. Well, I'm sure that you can guess what one of them is. In this episode, I wanted to talk about the three most powerful healing practices I know and have used for years. And all of them come down to the same principle, heal thyself. I truly believe and have experienced that the most powerful healing comes from directly within us. The challenge is that the dominant messaging we receive from all aspects of our lives really is the opposite, that we are in need of an intermediary and a source outside of us for any kind of healing. A doctor holds the knowledge or the pills or the knife that will deliver us. This kind of story. So instead, all of my work is about showing people the power that exists within them and specifically between their legs. Or if I do recommend any kind of outside practices, they are all about going, bringing you back to yourself. What helps to bring you back to yourself and into balance? So anything that brings the power back to you and creates independence and resilience rather than dependence on an outside entity or a substance is what I am all about. So first off, we have nature. So I've had a really beautiful relationship with nature for my whole life. When we were growing up, we lived at the edge of a city and so our backyard really was the wilderness and we had a cabin that we would go to in the summer and on weekends the same thing in the middle of the forest and so that was always a really big part of my life and a place where I had sanctuary. You know, it was very soothing and balancing and always provided me with a sense of solace and even healing. Even if I couldn't articulate what that was at a young age, it was always a big part of my life. And then as I've grown older, I've still, even when I had large, <laughs> when, ta- when I was living in the middle of London back in my early 20s, I remember dating this guy who was a local from London and just asking him to take me out of the city, take me into the bush. And we just took trains and trains and trains until we could get to some little patch of nearly non-existent forest to soothe my nature craving heart. So that's always been this instinctive part of me. And now these kinds of things have received more airtime where we talk about things like earthing and actually getting your bare feet into the ground and that you create this positive charge in your system and very quickly stabilize or recalibrate yourself through doing this. And things like breathing oxygen, you know, there's not as much oxygen in our air these days. And now this is not natural by any means, but it's more of an analogy is like going into oxygen chambers to breathe oxygen. What a thought. Or just getting out into places in nature where there is a predominance of more oxygen in the air. And there's a term in Japanese for forest bathing, shinuku, I think it's called, something close to that, where they actually go out into the forest and just immerse themselves and um, receive healing and balancing from being in the forest. And they've done studies on that, how it improves outlook and even health. So we have all of these documented things, you know, even the food that we eat, right? So having food that's organically grown or even better, biodynamically grown, which is like organic growing on speed, (laughs) on, on steroids, and, you know, getting the energy from the earth directly. And I remember when I was, when I had my son, 
and we were out in the middle of whatever sort of nowhere and my midwife whose place I was staying at had a garden beautiful huge gardens and every day my partner would bring me in this bowl of greens that were picked directly out of the earth you know moments ago and I feel like that really accelerated the speed of my healing because not only were these foods organic but they were directly bringing me the life energy of the earth the plant in its uncompromised direct state so even getting into the garden right getting your feet in the earth and your hands in the earth I think are all very therapeutic and for me I spend a lot of time on my computer and I'm very aware of balancing out my days by going for beach walks going surfing going walking through the bush and getting into the garden getting in there and just even if I'm picking weeds out even though weeds could be argued to be medicinal in many cases um cleaning out the gardens, doing anything where I can spend time connecting with the earth. And I know that that balances out the time that I spend connected to technology. I spend a lot of time in the sun and I deliberately go out in the sun between the peak hours of 11 and 2 and I get my vitamin D harvest and I don't book appointments during that time. I try not to have any calls during that time because that is my appointment with the sun. And I go and if I, I expose as much skin as I can and if I'm not able to expose all of my skin I'll wear a bikini but otherwise I'm really into breast sunning and genital sunning that became rather popular this asshole sunning <laughs> lately but it's true you can take I mean from the energetic or Taoist perspective you can take in all this yang energy as you're sunning but I think they've even shown that it can increase testosterone was it through getting sun up your butt so all good things and yeah the sun is a big part of my life and my healing regime and it's this at the opposite that sunlight actually damages people so getting sun burnt yes but sun tanning and generally gradually creating that tan in your system is actually very medicinal and protective it protects against cancer so it's not tanning that's destructive it's burning and so if you just gradually increase your exposure day to day then you're building up your melatonin and you create this beautiful glow and you are you know, boosting your health and your immune system all through doing that. So with all of that increased vitamin D and it's yang energy, it's a really powerful life force energy. I've gotten into sun gazing lately and I don't know enough to talk about it in an expert way. There's information out there. It's rather controversial in some circles, but other people swear by it, you know, and there have been entire sects of people who are breatharians and have learned how to extract life force energy out of the atmosphere or the sun or nature and bypassing food in the process. So these are all definitely you know, extreme sides of the spectrum, but I believe that there's truth in all of these things. And we've just been distracted from these powers and the ways to generate free energy and instead dependent on outside sources. So I mentioned surfing. I love surfing. It's one of my most favorite things to do on the planet. And there is something so exquisitely beautiful and high inducing about merging with waves, right? If we think about waves as carriers of energy and power and to merge yourself with that and learn how to be so much in sync and in tune that you can ride it is just the most ecstatic feeling. And People I've known who have been longtime surfers, like I've met guys in their 50s, who 60s even, who've had, let's just say, rock and roll, hard partying lifestyles, but all through it, they were surfers, hardcore surfers, and they have the clearest they all seem to be blue-eyed, um, blue irises where there's a whole study called iridology where you can look at the makeup of somebody's iris and the more clumps and specks that you find in there are actually indicative map patterns of ailments happening in the body. And these guys, all of them had the clearest, clearest, pure, piercing blue eyes. And I know people who really look at the ocean as their medicine. So rather than going to doctors or you know specialists, they're like, oh, I'm feeling such and such. I need to get in the ocean. And they go into the ocean and they heal themselves, right? These people don't have 
um, connections or dependencies on allopathic or even natural medicine apart from that that they can direct and, and uh, connect with in the ocean or in nature in general. So I'm a big fan of this and I think that this is knowledge that has been very obscured over time even when we look at herbs, right? The healing power of plants and it appears to me that the remedy for any ailment that we could ever have as humans is available to us in the plant kingdom, even in underwater, right? I knew boats, people who were chartered. I didn't know the people chartering the boats. I knew some of the people who were working on the boats being chartered. The boats were being chartered by pharmaceutical companies to go out into the coral reefs in Indonesia and just collect specimens of plant life and coral life to test them so that they could basically steal molecular <laughs> structures and create create their own artificially made medications and by doing that they do not have to there's patents they can get right so in herbal medicine the only reason why herbal medicine has been vilified over the last hundred plus years or so is because you cannot patent herbs and so if you know anything about the history of allopathic medicine and its rockefeller roots this was this major push to take people out of the realm of natural healing and direct them instead into petroleum-based chemical-based pharmaceutical patentable medicine that is also with many side effects, highly addictive, and doesn't actually heal anything, right? It's just typically band-aids. I often refer to it as the allopathic MLM or pyramid scheme marketing plan, which is really what it is, right? They're just band-aids that often lead to other band-aids. And not to mention that um, iatrogenic medicine or allopathic medical error is, I'd say it's the leading cause of death in America. They say statistically it's the third leading cause, but the problem is that you can't actually prove sometimes, or, you know, somebody might have gotten a heart attack from taking medication. And so instead of calling it a side effect of the medication, they just call it death by heart attack. So the true number is likely to be number one cause of death. So contrary to that, you have the plant world, which has the remedies for, I would say, pretty much everything. So I've always felt that, not always, I didn't grow up that way. That wasn't the norm in my family. But when I was in my late teens, I guess I started learning about herbal medicine and studying it and then took that on as my primary healing modality and balancing modality. That's how I raised our son was with that intention, right? And that was our first aid kit was herbal medicine and homeopathics. That's what we had as a first aid kit. We never didn't use Tylenol or anything like that. That just wasn't the way of it. All right. So next up would be, of course, you're going to guess it, my sexual practices and the idea that our sexual energy is life force energy. And if you aren't creating babies with this energy, then you can be creating and manifesting everything you want to build in your life and use that energy as a rejuvenating and revitalizing tool within your own self and exchanging that with your partner. So I'm all about all of the foundation of my teachings is about conscious sexual practices, right? How to use our sexual energy in a way that betters us, makes us into better people. And the big barometric question I always ask is, does sex leave you feeling revitalized, rejuvenated, transformed, ecstatic, and like it changed your life? And if it doesn't, it's because you're doing it wrong. And that's not a judgment. It's just to say that there's a way to have sex that gives you energy and a way to have sex that takes it away, that makes you want to pass out or have a nap. And so my work is all about teaching people how to use their sexual energy in this way that's conscious and uplifting and has this rebirthing quality on their entire lives. And on this more energetic, spiritual, you know, psychosomatic way is that this quality of rebirthing and self-actualization that I just discovered through my own sexual experimentation when I was younger and following the the thread, I guess, like of my sexual experiences and feeling that they led me and did lead me to this place of 
becoming reborn. You know, I would have these cataclysmic, at a young age, I was having cervical orgasms very early on in my sexual experiences. And so that was the benchmark for me. That's what sex was. It was this complete rebirth, self-realizing. I'd studied Maslow's work, you know, in high school. And so I had the terminology for self-actualization, which I thought was amazing, these peak experiences. And I was having them in sex, right? So that, that really set the whole stage for my entire life's work of what sex is, right? Rather than what we're told that it is. And then as I learned more about Taoism and Tantra and then through my own going deeper experiences where I would have hours and hours of sex and marathon sex and tons of cervical orgasms and feeling that I would fuck my way through my problems, fuck my way through barriers or blockages or traumas that were residually stuck inside of my body or my system or my energy field and became a replacement for therapy. And look, I'm all about therapy and coaching and all kinds of alternative things, you know, modalities that I've explored over the years, but probably one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful has been sex and conscious sex, right? This conscious sex where you're harvesting sexual energy, harnessing it, and then able to channel it out into your life. And I even talk about, you know, the Taoist's mapped out different sexual positions for healing. I talked about that in my video last week of tantric secrets and what I call sacred sexuality, which is a fantastic video. It's up on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Go and check it out if you haven't already. Exquisitely beautiful. We found these gorgeous aerialist acrobatic artists to illustrate a lot of these tantric ideas and they did such an absolutely stunning job. So within that is also the idea, of course, of genital strengthening using jade eggs, yoni eggs, men creating pelvic strength through penile lifting exercises. All of that is about amplifying and connecting to the power of your genitals and so that they can really work in the fashion that they're meant to, which is that as your engines, your mover and your shakers in your life and they become these fueling stations, right? Like your bed is this refueling station that you use as a couple. And then your your tools, your vehicles are really your reproductive organs. And so many people, you know, naturally because of the way sex is presented in our culture, become cut off from and dissociated from their sexual organs. And that's why there's such a focus on that reconnection in the work that I do, because through that dissociation, they can no longer tune into the energies of those things. They can't properly harvest and you know use their sexual energy. And the worst case scenario is that they are so dissociated that they literally physically get these things cut off, right? Women get breasts cut off or men get prostates cut out or what have you, right? It's very common in American, <laughs> American life for women to be told that their reproductive organs are disposable, right? Their uteruses and their ovaries. It's like, no worries, you don't need that. Or your cervix, oh, just take it out. And I talk about how absolutely not these things are fundamentally important to who we are. However, if you are somebody who has lost these organs, I've been told lies by the medical establishment, um, you can still re-tune into the powers of these organs as phantom limbs, right? I teach techniques to energetically reconnect and heal and still tap those powers. It's still possible. Even if you've lost them, I would simply never recommend that people get them removed. I mean, look, there might be some circumstances, but certainly never ever to the degree that women are coerced and men as well into doing this currently. So that's a huge piece is your genital strengthening and the whole concept of using your relationship as a power source, which, you know, I talk about the nature of the holy fuck and superpower couples and that by applying these principles, then your relationship really becomes this secret weapon, this power source that fuels your entire life. And that's what it was meant to do, right? So this idea of sex as a minimal part of a relationship or your life is just blasphemy. (laughs) That is, I would create, I would posit that that is intentionally 
created taboo and censorship and misinformation that takes the power away from people. So how crazy is that? That the power, this most important reproductive power of the whole universe is right at your fingertips. And yet through the conditioning and the lies and the taboo and the shame and the violations that take place, people are completely cut off from this power source that literally lives within their own body. How crazy is that? So again, all of my work is about reuniting people with that power, re-resurrecting people with that power. So all of the practices that I do are connected to that, including things like yoni and lingam massage, right? We have these whole acupressure point maps all over the genitals and even the breasts. So the cock, the pussy, vulva, Uh, breasts, all of it are full of meridian lines and pressure points. And by stimulating them, we totally revitalize our entire system. So that is, and we heal, right? So by this whole disconnection scenario that I'm talking about, by going through and massaging and reconnecting consciously, both on ourselves and to our partners, we bring these organs back to life and let them integrate and become part of us and the power support sources that they were ultimately supposed to be. And then that leads us into orgasms, right? Orgasms for self-realization, like how the deeper, especially in women, cataclysmic, vaginal, cervical, G-spot, ejaculatory orgasms really are necessary medicine, essential medicine, and a way of becoming who we really are. And then for men, it's having expanded tantric hours long orgasms and learning eventually how to separate orgasm from ejaculation. These are things that are available to every single person on the planet. I always like to reiterate the Anami guarantee, which is that everyone can, everyone is capable of having these experiences. It's not just some select few, it's the select few that study my work <laughs> but, and, and a few others apart from that but everyone I guarantee is capable of experiencing these things they just need the right tools and belief and then they have to shed the lies and the misinformation and the negative programming that they've taken in from the culture at large and then the whole world is their oyster sexually and overall speaking And then the third tool would be meditation. So I have practiced meditation for the past 30 years, and I first was taught it through the use of a mantra. And there's all different styles of meditation. And I have used primarily mantra, so using different words with high vibrations, like most people are familiar with the word OM. And my number one tool, go-to word is HU, H-U, which is an ancient name for God, spirit, energy, the universe, whatever you want to call it. And it sounds like that, like the name HU or the color HU as in HU. So I've been using that word as a mantra and chanting it pretty much every day for the last, I mean, that wasn't the first practice I learned. So it was a few years after that. So 27 or so years. And it's, to me, it's a non-negotiable. So I typically meditate in the morning because that's easiest to just get it done. It sets the stage for my day. And I, there's no way to feel like the day got by and, you know, it slipped through your fingers because I tried sometimes doing it, my primary meditation at night. And I found that it was too easy to let it just kind of fall to the wayside. So I've had that as a habit. So that means that, you know, if I, whatever, look, I usually don't have very regimented a life in terms of places I have to be, but I always leave time to meditate. So I don't really leave the house until I meditate. And And lately, over the past year, with all of the craziness going on, I've upped my meditation to doing it three times a day now. So I do an evening meditation and then I do a midday meditation. Usually when I go to the beach for my midday sun, tan, vitamin D harvesting break, I will meditate for a while as I'm lying in the sun. I like to sit up when I meditate though, so that I don't fall asleep, but because that middle of the day one, I consider like a bonus round (laughs) and I'm okay with lying down. And if I drift off a bit, that's fine. And honestly, I have found that this has really helped over the past year for me to keep a really positive outlook on things. Like I've upped my 
my connection to nature, like I would say in the last year, and I've upped my meditation practice. The sexual practices are about the same as, you know, they typically are. And yeah, that has been profound for me. And I feel like a side note here in terms of things that we're all experiencing in the, the upped challenges spiritually, if we look at this as as I do, as life as being a spiritual adventure and the ante's really been upped over the past year plus, right? And so how do we deal with that? How do we deal with it? What are the tools we have? And for me, that's upping my game and these practices that I know bring me into the highest parts of myself, give me fortitude and insight and help me to see a bigger picture and help me to know and remember that there is always a solution, right? There's always a solution and it was just up to us to find it. And meditation is one of the most amazing ways to open up that inner channel, whether you consider that you're con connecting to nature or God or the universe or some kind of positive flow and energy that exists, right? That it's like dipping into a well. And there's a wonderful story I love about meditation where they somebody speaking likened it to this analogy of a Stradivarius violin that was found like like hidden in the walls of a home, right? They were either demolishing or renovating a home and they pulled out the Stradivarius violin and it was quite old, like centuries old, or are they really that old? I can't remember. Um, and they put it under this like, powerful electron microscope and looked at the structure of it and then they so they looked at it originally before anyone touched it anyone played it and then they began playing it daily and they watched how the structure changed and then as soon as people they would miss a day in playing it it would revert back to the structure it had you know in not being touched for a while and they used that as an analogy for you know, the, the power and the benefit of having a daily practice of meditation. So something that continually maintains and ups your game all of the time, right? And obviously then by doing it even more, even though I would say you don't need to spend hours and hours in meditation, my belief is that you can get in and get out and carry on with your life. And so for me, I was taught that really 20 minutes a day is enough. Like that's what you need to get in and get out. And then ideally doing something before bedtime to really clear and purify your state of consciousness to take you into the dream state in a more positive, you know, frame of mind. So that's how I like to do it is morning and then something in the evening, maybe not right before bed, but at least a couple, a few hours before bed that then also replenishes me for the evening for that next section of the day. And then I'm doing that sun tanning uh, vitamin D time as well. So like there's all different kinds of ways to meditate. I've primarily used the mantra way and I use a whole, I have a whole lexicon of Sanskrit words that I play with and choose from to, you know, to bring on different qualities that I'm working with in my life. And I'm a huge fan also of guided meditation. So guided visualization. So going inside and doing something so that you aren't just passive in your meditation practice. So even when I chant, after I do the chant, I will go inside and do something. So it's this concept concept of creating your world. So you start out by raising your vibration, elevating that state of consciousness, and then using your imagination to visualize what you want to bring into your reality. So that's a big part of what I do personally. And then in all of my salons and programs, that's a huge part of it is that I work a lot with guided visualizations and I create them and give them to the people in my courses. Even with our crystal elixirs, when you buy one of our Anami crystal elixirs in the Anami Alchemia online shop, every one of them comes with a guided visualization to really amplify the power of that elixir. So that's, in my view, a really big, all of these, uh, you know, the secret and these books on creating your own reality are really about that, right? That we have to spend time consciously visualizing what we want to manifest in our lives. And if you combine that with upping and revving up and being able to tap into and harness your sexual energy, that creative potent force that we all have, gangbusters, right? Like that is the magical combination of how to really get things done in the world. And people who don't know this to, in, are really operating at a deficiency, right? Like that's when I think life can become very difficult because 
you're creating based on unconscious patterns and beliefs and ideas and that's what's manifesting in their reality instead of going inside and being the architect and the creator of whatever you want and then having the added power and bonus of your sexual energy to you know as the engine right the absolute super fuel to power everything that you want to do in your life and then you know bringing that back to nature is that I don't think I touched on this, but what I realized as well early on is that it's this massive detox mechanism. And I remember being, I was living in the city and it was early in the days of, I think kind of the coaching that I'm doing now, right? And I was working a lot and wasn't taking a good enough time off, right? Like balancing out the work and the play. And I grabbed my son and, and his little, one of his little friends. I'm just like, look, we're going out into the city <laughs> or out, out into the country for the weekend. And we did, we just drove out to this cabin and I just got there and I felt my whole system unwind. Like for the first day, I could barely move. Like I was just, you know, kind of sitting in the cabin trying to get them to do indoor things because it was very, I was exhausted. But then the next day I felt this surge of energy and we were, you know, out doing all kinds of fun stuff in the woods and, but just total resurrection. And by the time, you know, the next day we went back into the city, or maybe the day after that, I can't remember. And I just felt totally rejuvenated. And I didn't even have to do anything conscious to detox or, you know, whatever, cleanse myself. All I had to do was be out in nature, right? And we went to this little island and, you know, right into into the wilderness, right? So not just suburban nature, but proper off, not totally off the grid, but pretty off the grid nature. The further off the grid you can get, I think the better, right? And I make, I live someplace that's not, I'd say off the grid, but fairly remote these days. And, um, but I always make a point throughout the year of getting fully off grid in terms of no internet, cell phone, going out on surf trips and stuff like that on boats or going out camping into the wilderness where we don't have signal and totally getting out of that space. And whether that's just not being around those electromagnetic waves, but also not having that dependency on technology, like checking your email or your messages or your Instagram, all of that kind of stuff. Like I'm, you know, what's grateful that I have and wonderful that I've created this lifestyle where my livelihood is connected to the internet, really. But ultimately, I love being able to unplug and, you know, get totally out of that realm as well and back to nature, right? The natural state of the human. And I believe that nature can just pull toxicity, emotional toxicity, physical toxicity out of us like a poultice, like osmosis. It just pulls it out, right? Without us having to consciously do it. So these, all of these things are, I think, you know, vastly underrated, especially, I mean, meditations received its due with like Harvard studies of like reducing stress and the health benefits of meditation, which is great. It's awesome. I don't know that people fully appreciate it for the dramatic healing or life-changing ability that it really has. Some people do, right? Probably people who practice it do. And the same, and then, but especially the sexual practices and nature, spending time in nature, I think would be vastly underrated as healing modalities in the modern world. And you know, on the contrary, there's been a massive effort to portray them as incidental or in, you know, even, you know, nasty, right? To cut people off from the natural world or to downgrade the natural natural world or to cut people off from their sexual energy and make it taboo and shameful and yuck. Oh, that's disgusting, right? Like, and of course, things can be used in a way that is more base versus a higher enlightened view of these things. But overall, these to me are the gold. And the wonderful thing is, is that they're all free, right? So maybe herbs, you could, you know, in the modern day, you would pay for them, but they're all grown. They're all found in nature growing for free, right? So all of these things can be done for free. And that's pretty amazing. And to think that we have access to all of these things, if we clear away any barriers that prevent us from really tuning into these things. And I'll end on a story that I was told within these spiritual parables, which is called the acres of diamonds. And the story is really all about this. I think he's a 
farmer in and he's you know, sets off to find his fortune. I think he hears about some place, this magical place where there's buried treasure and he's got an inkling where it might be. And so he sells his land and sets off on this journey. You know, it's away for years and years and years. And in the end, he doesn't, I can't remember if he, I should have looked up this story before doing this. If he comes back to his land or the per- like the person who bought his land ends up digging on the land and ends up finding these acres of diamonds. And so, of course, the story, the, the lesson there is that it's all within us or within our reach, even if we get these stories telling us that we need to go on these far-flung journeys and do these things outside of us and outside of our realm. And that instead, all of that power and these healing tools are directly available to us. We just need to learn how to tune into them or open our minds to the possibility of how to tune into them. So these really are my three biggest go-to tools. And I said, I really upped the game with my meditation practice and spending time in nature this year and I get that for people who haven't done these things it might not seem that big a deal like I think of some friends of mine who are like I'm a city girl I don't get out into nature and I'm like well you know you're missing out like (laughs) well I don't say that I mean I think it but they just don't know what they don't know and because I guess I grew up having those experiences I know right and then I've had them reinforced throughout my adult life as well but that's, those are my best suggestions. And some of them need a little bit more direction, like how to use a yoni egg, right? Or yoni and lingo massage. It can be great to have some pointers with that. And you can always check out other podcasts of mine as well as my YouTube videos where I've got instructions on yoni and lingo massage. And of course, the jade egg work. There's lots of videos and my programs go deeper into that as with all the relationship and sexual stuff. And then these other topics in nature, right? Like I studied herbal medicine and homeopathy and, but other stuff, you can just get outside and get your buns out, get your genitals out or get your bikini or bathing suit covered body out and go for nature walks, go for as, you know, as far out of the city as you can get as much as you can get and go barefoot you know, practice going barefoot, even go out into your yard and do some gardening or walk around or lie in the yard and get into the earth. And the more you do it, you just constantly up the level of how good you feel so that that becomes your natural default state is living in ecstasy and bliss. <laughs> 